Unfortunately, there are many businesses who believe if their customers are not raising concerns, then they must be happy. But the sad truth is that this is far from accurate. Hello, and welcome to a whole new episode of Ingati CX. I'm your host, Kimberly, and we're really glad to have all of you join us today. On the show, we talk to CX and technology experts from around the world. We explore, uncover, and share fresh insights on creating experiences that your customers will remember and look forward to. Engadi is the world's leading multilingual, no-code, digital CX platform available across 14 channels with 45,000 solutions created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engadi has also been recognized as the top platform by Inc. Magazine, Tech World, CIO Magazine, and many others. We run the Engati blog, the video channel, the Engati CX podcast, receiving upwards of 400,000 visitors annually. Engati recently also won the Kodi Award for being the best AI-driven technology solution of 2021. And now for our guest, we have Zarina Sheikh Matthew with us on the show. Zarina Sheikh Matthew is the Executive Director and Customer Experience Specialist at Imtiaz Consulting. Zarina has a career of history spanning over 25 years accountable for customer experience across sales and service with progressive and dynamic organizations. With substantial experience as a senior manager, service delivery professional, and customer champion, she's developed and executed strategies to enhance customer journey. A particular sweet spot is that she is very much into promoting cross-functional collaboration to drive cultural transformation, delivering change, and continuous improvement. Welcome to the show, Zarina. We are so glad to have you join us today. Thank you, Kimberly. That's that's a really great introduction. Very kind of you. So let me just start with a little bit of my background and what we do at NTR. So we're a management practice that focuses on enhancing the customer and employee experience. And we do this by a consultancy to review and improve the end-to-end customer engagement model corporate training to enhance business skills like customer service, professional written communication, and account management. And we also do executive and team coaching for personal growth across the organization. We strongly believe in the power of partnerships, and we are proud to collaborate with Brilliant Customer Service for corporate training and workshops, the Capability Farm for all coaching requirements, and Pro Commercia for customer management solutions. I'm honoured to be listed in the top 100 UK customer experience professionals for 2021, and thrilled that this year I was awarded Best HR Consultancy of the Year for Western Europe for our people-focused approach to experience management. Uh, Before we dive into our amazing interview with Zarina, don't forget to subscribe to Engati so that you get access to exclusive content coming from thought leaders from around the globe. Well, Zarina, I'm sure you're going to throw uh, some light on uh, these specific questions that we have for you today. What is your take on experience management? In what ways are customer experience management and employee experience management uh, related? So customer experience and employee experience are primarily interdependent because employees design and deliver the customer experience and unhappy employees are unhappy customers. The skills needed to manage and deliver a great customer experience only happen when employees are engaged and empowered and they are given the skills and tools to respond to customer needs both in the moment as well as strategically. Otherwise, a business can't meet every change in customer need. Additionally, unhappy customers are often frustrated and take those frustrations out on staff. It's also really important to recognize systems and processes that let down customers often let down employees too. From an emotional perspective, we all like to feel we're doing a good job. If customers are unhappy, it can feel like we're not achieving this. So irrespective of the situation that is impacting the sentiment. And as employees, our desire, passion, and ability to do a good job really does translate into the quality of the customer experience. 
Uh, now that you're talking about employee experience here, I think what really comes into picture is company culture that really kind of molds employee experience here. How is the current CX revolution kind of impacting company culture? What steps should businesses take and are lagging, you know, to become more customer oriented? So this is one of my favorite topics because I always say that CX has got to start with the employee. It's got to be an employee first approach to achieve that excellent and consistent mm -hmm. CX. So to achieve customer experience success, I always refer to my three C's, communication, collaboration and customer satisfaction. Effective communication is a must within teams, across different functions, company-wide as well as with customer and third-party partners and if this doesn't happen it leads to ambiguity it can create knowledge gaps frustration dissatisfaction and above all mistrust and from that position it can be an uphill struggle to recover the relationship company culture must move away from a siloed mentality and move towards cross-functional collaboration this lies at the heart of customer experience management. One person or a single team alone cannot deliver a consistent, high standard customer experience. This is a team effort, both internally facing as well as customer facing, as every piece of the puzzle is an important part to create the bigger picture. Yes, yes. And from, from a customer satisfaction perspective, that can only be achieved if we have empathy with customers. So I heard this recently described as the new currency when it comes to excellent customer experience. And this is such a great way to articulate it. Empathy, emotional intelligence and compassion are key attributes for organisations to promote, educate and deliver. Uh, it is actually very helpful that you kind of, you know, brought it out together and kind of, you know, named it under three things. Because when we talk about, uh, you know, culture and uh, everything, everything just feels all over the place. And I think it's very important that we clearly define these three things here. Uh, what yeah. steps should CX teams, you know, take to create these uh, meaningful relationships with customers? You clearly mentioned the three Cs. Uh, are there any activities or something of that sort that we, we can start implementing here? So the starting point must be to exceed the customer service expectations. Mm. So this can be delivering real-time assistance, understanding the customer's needs and gathering their feedback, or making them feel special by companies empowering their employees to fulfill their customers' needs in order to deliver a great experience. Personalization is key to establishing a long and trustworthy relationship with the business. And it's well documented that it increases loyalty, it drives higher conversion, and ultimately increases revenue. And it can be the most simple aspects of engagement that have the biggest impact on the customer experience. Things like matching employee tone with the customer personality, understanding who prefers those brief conversations and those that like to chat for longer, recognizing these nuances help to build stronger personalized customer relationships, knowing their preferred contact channels, understanding customer psychology, knowing their needs at a granular level is when you're able to deliver higher customer satisfaction levels. And customers expect to be valued. They need to know you are listening, that you care about their problem and that you can resolve it effectively. Predictive behavioral analytics is set to be huge, providing organizations with analysis in order to better understand and deliver to their customers' needs. And it might sound obvious, but customer service etiquette is crucial. There is a mountain of data out there confirming this, particularly in the B2C space where many a consumer has stopped buying from a brand after a poor customer service experience. Yes. yes. Therefore, it's imperative that good customer service is embedded right across the organization. And let's not forget that internally facing teams have customers too, their colleagues, 
by delivering great service to their peers and their managers. This helps to build those strong internal relationships, which will in turn impact the customer experience. Yes, when you were talking, I just had flashbacks of you know these small incidents that we have in our day-to-day conversations. You touched upon uh, personalization being a very important concept. Uh, talking from the business point of view, do, do you think uh, personalizations kind of are a roadblock or something that would kind of you know uh, put weight into understanding every different kind of persona of the customers? I think businesses are starting to recognize there is not a one size fits all. And so they are including that personalization into their customer strategies. And the B2C market do this very, very well. Yeah. And we will see, you know, lots and lots of consumer facing brands doing this and they're meeting those needs of their of their customers and pros- prospective customers as well. The B2B market is getting on on the same train, so to speak. Um, But I I personally think that they are behind the B2C from that perspective. When we talk about customer experience, I I kind of see it as a cube uh, and which have different sides. And one of the sides is customer loyalty. Would you like to kind of give us the key uh, concepts into being able to engage, empathize and build customer loyalty up? And what about dealing with a frustrated customer? What if you have one? I mean, you can be, you can put on the best face there, but how can you, uh, can you share some techniques on how we can de-escalate a a frustrated customer? First and foremost, listen, listen, listen. I cannot emphasize this enough. There must be a stronger focus on active listening. Educating employees to demonstrate due care and attention the right attitude, reaction, and response. Effective listening is about self-awareness. So are you only hearing? Are you passively listening? Or are you actively engaging? Listen in order to learn. Don't focus on your response while they are still talking. You will miss so much. Listening with intention will enable you to adjust your response based on the information they have provided. Leverage every opportunity to make the customer feel comfortable, valued and appreciated so that you can meet and exceed their expectations. And when it comes to customer frustrations, it's really important that we are always polite and courteous, no exceptions. We are mindful of how the customer feels and how our words and behaviors are impacting this. We use positive phrases, we're apologetic, and we're empathetic. Be gracious, use please and thank you. It's so simple, but it's so surprising how often these words are not used. They can diffuse the most volatile situations. We must be patient, show empathy, be considerate and understanding, and be genuine. Show our humanity. It's these engagements that will build strong connections with our customers. And of course, the ultimate goal must be to reduce or eradicate complaints completely. The only way to achieve this is to understand why customers complain. So we need to undertake that deep dive to identify root cause. We then need to ascertain those corrective actions to take away the immediate pain, followed by the implementation of preventative measures to ensure the issue doesn't reoccur. Don't be mistaken, this is not a quick process. Depending on the severity or complexity of the issue or issues, this can take months or even years to crack. And in these most complicated cases, it's imperative there is ownership, commitment and accountability in order to resolve the issues in a sustainable manner and deliver excellence for the customer. Perfect. You have kind of summarized everything and kind of given us like a mini guide as to how we can tackle this. Uh, You have clearly mentioned that, you know, listening is the only and the best rule that you can imply. And then there is kind of a disconnect here. I mean, the customer is kind of saying something else and you are like replying for something else. Uh, Are there any other sound bites you'd like to leave our audience with? 
So if there is one activity I would urge businesses to do, it is to acquire customer feedback and most importantly, act on it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are many businesses who believe if their customers are not raising concerns, then they must be happy. But the sad truth is that this is far from accurate. So gathering customer feedback is imperative to understand what you're doing well and where you need to focus your improvement activities. Asking customers for their opinions signals to them that their views matter, they are important, you value them, and you want to provide an enhanced product or service to meet their needs. Like all of us, customers have been through enormous changes since the pandemic hit in March 2020. Businesses have navigated remote working, reduced employee numbers, disrupted production and supply chains, decreased revenues, business plans have been shelved, priorities have clearly had to be redefined. And consumers have faced their own challenges, not least of which has been their own personal survival from a deadly virus. But that aside, their purchasing habits have been changed forever. And with, with all this happening, it's now the time to understand how things have changed in both the B2B and B2C markets. What does the new normal look like for our customers? If we don't ask, we're never going to find out. And perhaps we will find out when the customer leaves us, when they stop buying from us, when they've taken their business to a competitor that did reach out to them to ascertain the customer's new needs. So let's not be complacent. We must proactively obtain this information and act upon it to deliver products and services that our customers need and want. And then we must communicate the enhancements implemented so that customers know that we've listened to their feedback and taken positive action. And strengthening those customer relationships and building emotional connections must be everyone's focus if we're to achieve customer experience success. Also, when you spoke about voice of the customer, I also feel it's very important to kind of use that data that we're collecting from them and not just, you know, like collect maybe your survey forms or stuff like that. You really just don't collect the, that data and kind of just store it. You, you're supposed to redo your models, redo your frameworks again and see how you can kind of actually cater to what they're actually asking or what kind of challenges they're facing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and customer data, customer feedback, whether that's structured, unstructured, they give it to you um, on their own accord or you go out and collect it. We've got to treat it like gold dust because that is what it is. And we mustn't just put it in a box and, 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 and store it away. We've got to absolutely leverage that to improve the service or products that we provide. Uh, thank you for giving us your time. Your insights were really valuable. No, thank you, Kimberly. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure, likewise. We'll be back again with a new episode and a brand new expert soon. So stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one.